there we go hi year one happy thursday happy art day um it's your last art lesson of this unit all about mixing colors so we're going to use lots of color today and it's your final lesson so you get to create something really special and unique to you so today is the 11th of february 2021 and our learning objective today, we're learning to create our own artwork, but it's going to be inspired by the artist Kandinsky, whom we've been learning about this term. So all term we've been thinking, how can I create modern art? And today we're going to explore examples of Kandinsky's work. We're going to talk about some themes of his style, and then we're going to create our own artwork. And finally, we're going to assess our own artwork. And that's the whole process of creating a piece of modern art. So you will need any art materials you have at home. And I've given you lots of examples at the end of this to show you different things you can do at home. Um, so you can use what you have and you can be quite creative about it too. So we're gonna start with a five minute doodle. So if you'd like to pause the video in just a moment and on YouTube, you can search Art Hub for Kids and you can choose any of those five to seven minute long videos for you to do your art hub starter for your doodling and then when you're done you can come on back to the video and we will do our just checking all right now that you're all warmed up with your doodling we're going to do our just checking questions so you can just answer me on the screen or if you like you can write it down it's completely up to you you can share it with an adult at home so from last week Orange, purple, and green, are they primary colors or secondary colors? Remember, primary colors are colors that just exist, and secondary colors are the colors that we use to make other, that are the colors that are made from primary colors put together. That's right, they're secondary colors, and we know because we've made some of them. Okay, from our last unit, if you look closely at the picture up here on the screen, this is one of Picasso's paintings. Would we call it a self-portrait? So look closely at that painting. Actually, I can make it a bit bigger so you can see it a bit better on the screen. So would we call that painting a self-portrait of the artist Picasso? Thumbs up or thumbs down? If you said thumbs down, well done. That is a beautiful landscape and it has um, lots of pigeons. He, he painted a lot of pigeons in the 1950s. Um, but Picasso was not a pigeon, so it is not considered a self-portrait. From last term, concentric shapes are shapes that are, that share the same center. That shouldn't be last term, that should be last week, I'm sorry. Good question though. Concentric shapes are shapes that share the same center, true or false, and I'm giving you a picture of them right beside. That is true, they do share the same center. So it can be a circle, it can be a triangle, it doesn't matter what shape it is, but they all have the same middle, the same center. And from last year, this is a really good one that we talk about a lot. If my friend's drawing looks different to mine, it means it's not as good. Is that true or false? Something really special to explore when we're thinking about creating our own art. And you're right, that's absolutely false because if our friend's drawing is different, that's part of what makes it special and unique. Right, so looking at some of the terms we've been using this term, some of the vocabulary terms we've been using this term, abstract art is art that does not depict reality. It's not realistic, but instead it uses shapes, colors, forms, and lines. So lots of examples we've seen of that. Mix means we're combining or putting together to form one substance or mass. Primary colors are any group of colors from which all other colors can be obtained by mixing. So those are our red, blue, and yellow. And secondary colors are the colors that we get when we mix primary colors together. And finally, concentric shapes, like you just told me and are just checking, are shapes that share the same center. Okay, so while we're getting started, I have featured a few examples of Kandinsky's art. I'm gonna give a little number next to each of them to help guide you. So we've got four different choices for you. Which painting is your favorite and why? So you can pause the screen, have a think. Do you like painting number one, number two, number three, or number four? And make sure you're able to share why you like it because that's gonna help you get inspired for your own work today. So pause the screen and have a little go at talking about it. Right, and welcome back. 
I'm going to share with you which one I think I like best. I really like number two. And I chose it because I love the colors. I like that they're really bright and cheerful. And I love all the different shapes and lines. And actually, when I look really closely, I can see that it almost looks like we've used these shapes to create a face over here. I see the eye and the nose. And on this side, I've got some really interesting features, but I really love this black line that squiggles down because it looks really different. So I think I choose number two because I love the colors, I love the shapes, and I love how Kandinsky's used the space and the lines. So thank you for sharing with me which one you like. Okay, when we're talking about Kandinsky's art, we can notice a few themes or some things that he does. So his art is always abstract. It doesn't look like real life. Even in that piece of art where I said it, it looks like I kind of can see a face. You can tell it doesn't look like an actual portrait face or a real face that you'd see in a photograph. It's just kind of in the shape of a face. So it doesn't look real, realistic. It uses lots of colors. It uses lots of different 2D shapes and lines. I think we should add lines to that, 2D shapes and lines. And we talked about lines in our last unit using squiggly lines or zigzag lines or all kinds of lines we can use. And it uses the whole paper. So very, very seldom do you see a lot of empty space left. He tends to use the whole canvas that he has. And that's really important because that's going to be our success criteria when we look at our own artwork today. So this page is really, really important. You can pause the video, make sure you've got this down. These are four things that your art needs to include. You can create any kind of art you want, but we're looking for it to be abstract, uses lots of color, uses lots of different 2D shapes and lines, and it uses the whole paper. So that's how you're going to tell if you've done a really successful Kandinsky inspired piece of art. So which 2D shapes can we use? Well, we have all sorts of 2D shapes that we can see. We can use circles, rectangles, triangles, ovals, squares, rhombus, rhombus, plural, rhombus, I think, pentagons, hexagons, kites, heptagons, octagons. There's all kinds of different 2D shapes we can use. So have a look and maybe you can choose some that you'd like to draw. Now I've got some examples of art that's Kandinsky inspired, but it's been created by children. So it might be able to give you some ideas of something you could do. So this is a picture of a paper tree collage. So this was actually created by cutting out different shapes from sugar paper and sticking them all onto a big blue piece of paper. If you don't have different paper at home, that's okay too. You could use um, a magazine or a newspaper or a catalog because all of those pictures will have color in them. So you can cut out your shapes from any of those things as well. If you want to do some collage. We have another collage here where um, they've done it in the shape of a Christmas tree. So again, cutting out anything you have at home, you can color on different paper. So you could color um, if you have felt tips or crayons or anything to color with, you could color your circles and then cut them out or you could use things around the house. Like if you have flyers, so those um, leaflets that will come through your door, usually they have lots of colors on them. So you can cut out different shapes from your leaflets as well. This is a picture of a coloring page that someone printed from online. So if you have a, if you have a printer, you can print your own coloring page. They've printed this coloring page of apples, but they've used crayons and watercolors to use lots of different colors and concentric shapes as well. This is a shape picture that someone's created just by using felt tips on paper. So you can draw it with your felt tips or your coloring pencils if you have any. And finally, we have the lovely classic Kandinsky with those circles that a lot of you did last week. And this was actually done by using chalk. So if you have an easel at home or you have a younger brother or sister who has one of those easels to write on, you could use some of their chalk to actually make this on paper. So whatever we create today, I would like you to take a picture of it and send it in on Teams. I'm gonna post an assignment link just on the general that says art so you can upload a photo of what you've done. But before you send it in, I want you to do some self-assessment. We said that's the final thing. We're gonna look at Kandinsky's art, we're gonna get some ideas, we're gonna create it, and then we're going to assess it. So when we're looking at our art for assessment, we have to ask ourselves four important questions. 
So you can go and create your art. And then I want you to come back to this part of the video. And these are the four questions that you have to ask yourself about the piece of art that you created when you have it in front of you. Is it abstract? So does it look like a real picture or does it look not like real life? We, if it's abstract art, we don't want it to look like real life. Question two, did you use lots of colors? And remember I said, even if you don't have art materials at home, you can still use leaflets, you can get creative, you can use newspapers, you can use magazines that you have at home to cut out different shapes. So you can still get lots of color into your art, even if you don't have art supplies at home. You just have to look around and see what you have in your house. You could even use your computer. I've seen a few children submit things that they've made on like the painting program on their iPad. So you could use, and, and the painting program would let you use shapes and colors as well. So you could do that if you wanted to as well. Moving on to shapes, did, do you have lots of 2D shapes? So we can see in some art, like the concentric circles, he only uses circles. So you don't have to have loads of different shapes like triangles and circles and squares, but whatever you've used, you can see he has lots of different, they've used lots of different circles. So it doesn't have to be different 2D shapes, but it can be, but have you used lots of 2D shapes? Cause that's something Kandinsky did a lot. And finally, did you use the whole paper or did you leave a lot of empty space? So whatever you created, have a look at it. If you see lots of empty space around it, then you're going to want to go back and add some more because Kandinsky very rarely left any empty space. So those are four really important questions that you need to ask yourself when you're creating Kandinsky inspired art. So I want you to have a look at what you've created and ask yourself, is it abstract? Did I use a lot of colors? Did I use a lot of shapes? And did I use the whole paper? And if you did all four of those things, then you've been successful. If you haven't done all four of those things, then think, how can I make my art even better? How can I improve it? Maybe I could use some more shapes. Maybe I could put some more pictures in. So I've added a bit more. So you're using these questions to help you do your own next steps and be fantastic learners. And I absolutely, I love everything you create. So I cannot wait to see all your beautiful art uploaded to Teams. Um, and it'll be, hopefully you have a really fun afternoon getting creative, looking around your house for things that you can use um, and happy, happy arting artists. See you next time.